Often when I'm sharing the roadmap for effective conversations, I get questions about where should I be putting my personal testimony or story in? That's what today is all about. Stay tuned. Hi folks, welcome back to the Pro-Life Guys podcast, a show dedicated to equipping you with the tools that you need to have compassionate and compelling conversations about abortion so together we can change minds, save lives, and transform our culture. My name is Cam. I'm the host of the show. For those of you new to the program, welcome. Welcome aboard. I hope that you enjoy the ride. For those of you who have been plugged in for a long time, thank you for continuing to come back, for being subscribers to the show for being YouTube subscribers. If you're on YouTube, if you're not on YouTube, please please go check out our YouTube channel um, for a number of reasons, but most importantly, because that's where sometimes my guests or potential guests will go to gauge the size and worthiness of the show um, because it's difficult to know how big a show is. And many of the people that I'm aiming to get on the show um, have a lot of irons in the fire, have a lot of different people and uh, responsibilities that are... Uh, calling for their time. And so they want to know whether or not a show is actually successful, whether or not there's actually any kind of audience that goes along with it. Um, And so the bigger we're able to build the YouTube channel, the more likely people who are checking to see the size of the show um, and see that there's a number of people who are following and subscribed on their watching episodes, that kind of thing will be likely to join the show. I'm working on a few people. Um, I'll throw the names out there, even though they're not absolutely confirmed yet. I'm working to try to get Dr. Maureen Kondik on the show. She is a uh, neurobiologist and author of a number of pro-life papers talking about um, the beginning of human life. She is a, a massive resource that we use at the Canadian Center for Bioethical Reform um, with our interns, with our volunteers at times, certainly with our staff, to gain very, very good and deep knowledge about the beginning of human life. And so working on getting her in because I've had a few requests about mining a little bit further into the biology of when human life begins. And so I hope that I'll be able to have an episode on that coming up soon. Um, And a few other really cool guests that I've got coming down the tube as well. So I hope that you've been enjoying um, this kind of getting back to our roots, uh, main Tuesday episode talking all about apologetics, and then um, Thursday episodes generally featuring a variety of different topics, whether it's Humans of the Pro-Life Movement, whether it's bonus episodes, whether it's other content. I am hoping in the near future, hopefully in the next week or two, um, to start recording a little bit of content about building and growing your pro-life organization. And so there should be some cool content coming out on that end with regards to recruitment and um, theory of action, theory of change, that kind of thing. And so you can stay tuned for that as well. As I mentioned in the intro, today is all about how, when, where, and why we might be integrating personal testimony. And what do I mean by that? Well, often I get asked while doing uh, workshops and presentations, especially when I'm in the stage of justifications, we think about the roadmap for effective conversations, we're thinking about the first stage Um, addressing the justifications, meeting people where they're at before we bridge the gap towards the humanity of the preborn. And so often um, I have very well-meaning people, very, very well-meaning people who will hear the example that I want to walk through, particularly for an example like poverty. Imagine that a mother is struggling in poverty and she didn't really know what she was going to do. Would we ever suggest that she should be allowed to have an abortion then? And I have a lot of, of very well-meaning people who want to share their, their personal testimony of having overcome poverty. They want to share personal testimonies of overcoming bad relationships, traumatic relationships, traumatic experiences, including victims of sexual assault, and wanting to share their testimony as a beacon of hope for the person that they're talking to, to try to showcase, you know, this sounds like a really big problem, but guess what? I have been faced with that problem and it's not as bad as you think. I I often chuckle, um, Denise, I don't know if you listen to the podcast. We have a wonderful volunteer here in Calgary named Denise, a little bit older than I am. And with age comes a certain ability to say things that I might not be able to get away with. And so (laughs) I remember Denise was talking to some high school students here in Calgary Um, And one of them was going on and on and on about how difficult it would be to raise a child. 
And Denise looked her in the eye with the most charitable heart. And she said, sweetie, I've had seven children. It's not that bad. And she meant it so genuinely that she was able to have a breakthrough with that girl. And the girl said, like, really? Tell me about it. And she was able to share her story of being a mother of seven children and how beautiful that was. Um, And... I don't know if I would quite go so far as to say that that's the exception of the rule, but we need to be very careful because so often what we intend as inspiration comes across as refutation. What we're intending to share with them of like, you can do it. There's nothing crazy special about me and I was able to do it. You, you need to put your head down and, and get through it. But I, I know that you can. You're a strong person. You can get through this. Um, if I could get through it, then I'm sure that you could get through it. That kind of thing. It's meant in a very modest and humble way to inspire the people that we're talking to. But very often what is received is this problem that you think exists really isn't the problem. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, you don't need to worry about it, it's not that bad. And if that's the way that they're understanding what we're saying, then it's far more likely that you're going to get bogged down in a debate about whether or not you experienced true poverty or whether or not um, your relationship was really as Um, unhealthy as you're saying that it was, or or getting mind into all kinds of experience. And and I would argue that this goes as well for our incredible volunteers and team members and, and people. I'm sure some of you listening have chosen abortion in your own life or have been involved in abortion decisions. And I I thank you for your profound courage and and all that you bring to the pro-life movement. This is important as well when it comes to sharing that experience. If that is shared as a refutation, I thought this was a good decision for me and it wasn't, we don't want to get into a battle of he said, she said, or my poverty is worse than your poverty, therefore I'm allowed to have an abortion. Or even worse, you were in poverty and you should have had an abortion because how wildly offensive is that? And tragically, I have heard that said, and that is an incredibly damaging and wounding um, argument at times to get into when the pro-lifer is being told that they should have aborted their child who was raised in in a home that didn't have a tremendous amount of money, or even worse and even more savage, in my opinion, um, is when a, a very well-meaning pro-lifer shares, you know, my, my child was diagnosed with a disability and we courageously chose life for our child and they're living with a disability and we're supporting them and loving them and caring for them. And then the person that you're talking to says, you should have killed your child. You should have had an abortion. They are suffering. Why don't you care more about your child and their quality of life? Why are you forcing them to suffer and be miserable? That is devastating for anybody to hear about. And even if you don't lash out in self-defense and in defense of your child or the experience that you've been through, that can be incredibly incredibly difficult thing to be able to navigate with grace and with with courage and also make a breakthrough with them because if you're trying to refute it then then what you are trying to do is show the similarities between and if they're seeing it as similar and they think that abortion is okay then they're going to go the direction of suggesting that you should have had the abortion or they're going to go the opposite direction and say well it's not similar at all for xyz reason sure you were going through poverty, but you had the support of this or um, a supportive husband or boyfriend or something like that. And they're going to try to draw out the differences between your situation and their own. And all this to say, you're going to spend a lot of time talking about situations and not about the presence of a human life and the value of that human life. And so how do we use our experiences and uh, what we've gone through? to contribute towards conversation. Because I do think that there is a very, very meaningful place for experiences and witness and and sharing that. I think that that builds rapport. I think that builds vulnerability. I think that that contributes towards the entire mission of bridging the gap so that they can empathize more with you and understand that you're empathizing with them, turning this from a me versus you into a I get this. I understand what you're talking about. Let's work together through it. 
And so there's two ways that I think that we can share it. The first is the, the simpler, shorter way. The second way simply um, extends it. And so the first place that I think that personal stories and experiences and testimonies have tremendous value is in building common ground. That first step that we are going to do. So often our building of common ground is, I agree with you, that would be a really challenging situation. I'm, I'm talking in theory, I'm talking in the abstract, that would be a really difficult situation. If you have personal experience with the situation that they're talking about, you can integrate that right then and there. I agree with you that that is a really difficult situation. And, and to be honest, I, I've been there, right? I, I have been there. I have endured poverty. I have endured traumatic relationships. I have endured um, life-threatening situations for myself or for my child. I have endured what you are talking about. And I can agree. And let me share with you some of the hardship that I was faced with. And then I'm going to hit pause there. And I'm going to say, imagine that somebody in that situation with a born child, if, if you experienced this while you were pregnant, you want to get away from yourself potentially and just go right back to our roadmap. Imagine that somebody, theoretical, abstract, was going through the same thing that I had gone through with a born child. Should they be allowed to kill their born child to cope with that hardship? If not that born child, then why a pre-born child? So you're simply just integrating it during the common ground phase, and then you're flipping right back to the roadmap. You are demonstrating very quickly and concisely, but in a very meaningful way, that you can empathize with what they're bringing up, that you can identify with the suffering, with the challenge, with the hardship that they are um, suggesting. And then showing that with that understanding, you still persevere in the pro-life worldview. The second way that you can do that is simply by extending that. So you're going to do the ex exact same thing with the common ground. You can say, I agree with you that that is a really difficult situation. Here's how that played out in my own life. And then you're just going to apply the analogy and the question to yourself before you're only going to share how you overcame by the end of the conversation. And so you're going to look at this entire conversation through the lens of your own lived experience. And that's vulnerable. And that can be difficult to do with grace and with the, the courage necessary. And not, not courage. I don't want to say that you're, you're not being courageous by not doing this. But it can be difficult to separate and allow your own life and your own choices to be dissected. And so what I mean by that is if, for example, I have lived in profound suffering and my wife and I were living in, in profound suffering while we were pregnant with one of our children. And I were to say, you know, I agree with you that poverty was a very real situation. I mean, my wife and I, we were living in poverty. I had just been let go by this job and we had no idea where money was going to come from. We'd initially moved back in with my parents for a little bit of time and that was really not working out very well because my wife was really having a hard time with my my parents. This is all theoretical. For ex <laughs> I'll clarify, my wife gets along very well um, with, my, <laughs> with my parents and um, this certainly hasn't happened by God's grace. But um, for sake of example, and, and we're having a really hard time. We just couldn't do it anymore. We couldn't live with my parents anymore. And that was the only way that we could make this work, especially with my wife not working. Um, and so imagine, imagine if my wife had given birth to this child and we were living in this situation and it was just becoming unbearable. Would we ever suggest that we could kill our born child, be freed of that responsibility, and maybe my wife could get back to work and we can get back financially on our feet? Well, no, certainly not. We couldn't do that. And so if it would not be okay for my wife to kill our born child when we're in the midst of that absolutely ridiculously difficult um, situation with poverty, then why would it have been okay for her to have that abortion prior to the child being born. What's the difference? Well, in that case, blah, 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 not human. Walk through the human rights argument. Walk through personhood, human plus X, as we've covered in previous episodes. Um, I'll drop a link in the show notes below if you are new to the show and you haven't walked all the way through the roadmap. And then once you have seen that they've changed their mind on the abortion issue, okay, I agree with you that abortion would not be okay for you, your wife, the person that you love, whomever you are talking through the experience with. At that point, you can share the remainder 
of your testimony. And so because my wife and I knew that, that abortion was not an appropriate solution to the challenging pregnancy we were faced with, with poverty, this is what we actually did. We ended up connecting with, um, child protective services and, and surrendering our child and placing them for adoption. And uh, we have an open adoption and blah, blah, blah. It's so wonderful. And I'm so glad that we did it. Um, or we worked with a local pregnancy care center and they were able to offer not only, um, resume building support so that I could get back in the workforce, but they also helped us with some low income housing and that kind of thing. And this is how we navigated things. Here's the rest of my story. So all that to say, the way that you are integrating this is one of two ways. Either you got the, the front cover of the story is empathizing and identifying with the hardship, or you are going to have both the front cover and the back cover but you do not offer your personal story, your personal experience as a refutation. Even if you think that it's inspiring, the inspiration comes at the end. The inspiration comes the same time that the resolution comes. Once they have come to reject abortion as a viable option for navigating a challenging pregnancy, once they are no longer supportive of abortion in those cases or in any case, then you're able to share the rest of your witness. You're, you kind of planted the seed at the beginning and you can share with them at the end how you were able to navigate with the different resources available to um, care for your child or you're able to share the remainder of your abortion testimony as well, your abortion experience. That you're not going to share that through the, the conversation per se unless it gets very much into, but this is going to benefit my life in a whole lot of ways, you need to be very careful that we're not refuting the argument with, okay, you think that abortion is going to fix your life, but it ruined my life. That can at times work long into a conversation once you've built a lot of rapport with them. Um, but that kind of refutation, especially early in a conversation is probably not going to be very productive. And so again, you could share the, the challenge that you were faced with, um, initially, and then you can bookend it once they've come to embrace the pro-life worldview or seriously doubting the pro-abortion worldview, you can share the remainder of your, your post-abortion um, experience and story that, you know, to have this abortion when I was 18 years old and I thought that it was going to fix everything and my boyfriend ended up leaving me within three months and, and this and that and the other thing, or I ended up marrying the guy and we've been through marriage counseling or whatever um, it may be sharing the remainder of your story towards the end, uh, most likely, or at the very least, once you've built a tremendous amount of rapport um, and understanding with the person. Because again, I can't say it often enough, we don't want this to become a refutation. We don't want this to become a, you think this is going to fix your problems, but it's not because it didn't fix any of my problems or it created a whole different realm of problems for me or, or anything else, because that changes this from being rooted in the human connection that's based in the fact that human life begins at fertilization and that all humans get human rights. It changes it from that to abortion is wrong because I had a bad experience with it. Very likely you may have had a bad experience with it because you came to understand that abortion directly and intentionally kills that child and that um, consciously or subconsciously may have driven um, other challenges into your life. And I know that we're getting into a whole nother realm here that we are going to dive into in upcoming episodes again. Um, and we have um, thankfully focused on in the show before with conversations with um, Kevin Burke from Rachel's Vineyard um, and other uh, folks who have been involved in post-abortion healing ministries. But at the end of the day, to tie all of this together, you can share your story in a very beautiful and very meaningful way within this roadmap through the common ground component and through the action steps at the end of the conversation as a bookend so that you demonstrate that you can identify with the hardship, how the principles of human life beginning at fertilization and all humans getting human rights are what should be guiding us in our decision making around abortion and how we navigate pregnancy. And then finally, once you've been able to demonstrate um, and get some degree of buy into those principles, you are able to um, conclude with the inspiration of your story, helping them appreciate um, how you with the support of others or, or you um, on, on your own, maybe even um, were able to navigate the challenges um, that you were faced with.
And so hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Always hit me up, email at prolifeguys.com. Um, hit me up with other suggestions. I, I appreciate there was a YouTube video a couple um, couple weeks ago where I got a couple suggestions of people. I'm starting to follow up with them now um, to try to get them on the show. Love to get more suggestions for topics that can be covered, that should be covered, that should be covered better. If you think that there are better ways or different ways to be approaching some of these topics, um, don't hesitate to let me know. And um, check out the show notes below for some other cool opportunities, including our upcoming internship. We'd love to have people join us for either two months or four months over this summer to become um, very, very strong and confident pro-life ambassadors and leaders. And so the application for our internship will be in the show notes below. Definitely want to encourage you to check that out and stay tuned for more information about that internship. Thanks so much for tuning in. May God bless you abundantly wherever you're at, however many hours are left in your day.